like 115 pounds. So next, you know, I I went back home. I said, I said, Yo, G, what's up? I said, I don't want to play baseball no more. He goes, Why not? I said, Yo, all these guys are bigger than me. I can't do it. He goes, Then what you want to do? I said, I want to just box. He goes, That's what you want to do? I said, Yeah. And I said, Yo, I promise you, I will never lose in New York City again. He goes, Shut up. Get dressed. We're going to the gym. And ever since that, I dropped out of college. And I just pursued my boxing career. And from that last time, that novice year, you never I, won, lost I, again. Never, I never lost again in New How York City. How many Golden Gloves you won? I won three Golden Gloves. I won um, one twelve Open, 119 Open, and again 119 Open. And I even tried to make it the second Golden Glove, New York City Golden Glove um, boxer to, to win in three different weight classes. But I was so light in the ass, I couldn't make 125. I think that you went to a show. I think I in, caught in Brownsville, the last year. In, in, in Brownsville though, but um, I yeah. So I was I'm 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 recognized one of the best New York City Golden Gloves champ um, champions or even boxers in New York City. Yeah. So that's that's all because my father been, and now when I went to move to Staten Island for good, when my father moved from Brooklyn to Staten Island, my father was looking for boxing gym. So my father opened up a gym. It was an old gym. It wasn't nothing there in Park Hill Boxing, 140. That's where Wu-Tang and Raekwon, the chef, and all yeah. the Wu-Tang guys were were there. And um, he, we opened the gym up, and we've been there since, what, 98. That's his boxing gym. Yeah, in yeah. 98. So he gets a um, non-profit get off the kids off the streets. Mm -hmm. So my father made uh, Olympians. My father made Golden Glove. Golden Glove champions through fucking to what ninety eight, all the way to now. You know what I'm saying? And all from hard work. As some of, give give me some of the names of the the fighters that your father's been part of their careers. <laughs> wow, Louis Colazzo. You got um Charles Vanderveer. You got Anthony Irons. You got Curtis Stevens. You got Marcus Brown. You got Skip. Rest in peace. And a lot of these kids, they what they, about? He didn't he work with uh, Jacobs, Danny Jacobs. Yeah, he worked with Danny, you know, yeah. but Danny's Fredo. But um, Danny's not Fredo. Don't yeah, do that. yeah, well, all right, he's not. So shout um, out Danny Jacobs. All right, yeah. Man. Anyway, um, what else? Um, yeah, he worked. We listen. We we were all good because we had all the same trainers. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We all had rest in peace, Vic. Vic had Danny. We had we had Nermo. We had Uncle Dre. Uncle Dre stood there. Nermo. Uncle Dre, Victor Roundtree, Willie Vargas. We had a lot of. We had a old man Ralphie. We had every. We started in Coney Island, you know, Coney Island to Park Hill, Park Hill to Coney Island, then Starry City, Coney Island to Starry City. So Starry City was more like for me when I got into boxing and kind of really started getting with you guys. Starry City was probably one of the most elite gyms that I ever been part of because the the competition was so strong in that gym. It bred world champs. All of mm -hmm. you guys was on the cusp of being world champs, and that that energy was very infectious. And I've been in all the gyms all over the country, so when I say that, I'm, I really do put Star City and hold it in the highest regard as the gym goes. I mean, you know, I just watch those kids in there, all of you guys going there and work your asses off in that little small yeah, fucking it was like, it looked like, like a parking gym. lot. Yeah. yeah, it was, and it was Coney Island was even worse. And then we went to Cyrus City, and yeah, Coney Island. And people too. don't understand it. And I tell people, we started New York City boxing. We started hip hop and boxing. People don't want to think Who's about we? it. We mean who we you, yeah, Murder yeah. Inc. Just making sure Rockefeller. <laughs> we, um, who else? Um, and next thing you know it, that's when that's when um, it was Dame DeBella, and that's when everyone yeah, started going. Yeah, I put going. that together. Yes, CG was a big, big, big man behind the scenes, and he don't like to get no credit, but he don't like you know he's he he goes discreet, but yeah, he he was one of the biggest movements. He basically he started yeah, hang in front. He started hip hop and boxing. A lot of people are like oh every month. Every month in Manhattan was, Center, Manhattan, we used to sell Hammerstein Ballroom out, out. every that, month. Yep, and next thing you know, we came, 
every time it was it was Andre Berto, it was Curtis, Curtis, it was the Chin Chakers, it was Jay Don. Jay Don. You know, it, and it Danny was Danny Jacobs. Was, I'm saying it was crazy. Boxing, the the boxing vibe was and, Louis Collazo, yourself. I mean, it was a great night of great fighters on the cusp coming up, and then I did what most of these fighters don't, uh, boxing promoters don't do, is really, they don't really promote you. Mm. So I took the uh, the hip-hop approach. I made DVDs. I put out yeah. videos and stuff you of my fighters. You made that with, live with, the, live with Curtis and Jadon. That shit went viral, and it's know? still out there going crazy. People still find that DVD or that watch it on YouTube and see it and they, talk about the chin checkers. People, people don't understand how big and how good Jadon was on yeah. and Curtis was in, in back in those days. And... You were their you were their engine, Jadon and Curtis, while I was on Rockefeller's engine because yeah. if you think about it, um when I was working at Chelsea Piers, Jay Z used to come to um Chelsea Piers all the time and mm -hmm. Dame and Skane, Skane Dollar, some Skane's still my man. Shout out Skane. Skane. I just yeah. seen him the other day too. Skane's, a, Skane's my man. Um, it was Skane, it was Clue, Clue's still there yeah. trying to play basketball. So anyway, um who else? <laughs> then and then everyone, everyone and then you say they used to bring everyone. Like I met Heavy D, I you met everybody. Freaking, oh my god, Chelsea Pills with I mean, Jay Jay Z, Ja Rule, Fat Joe. I mean the list goes on, the locks, everybody. No, nah, I never met that Joe didn't Joe, I didn't see Fat, Fat that's Joe absolutely they, came. No, 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 I got, not, not no, they came to the but I'm talking about Chelsea Pierce. Oh, was, Chelsea. Nah, yeah, because they were that's when they were beating. Not, a not bit. Chelsea, yeah. He yeah, didn't go yeah. To Chelsea. So next thing you know it, when I was ready to turn pro, even when I was an amateur, Jay used to be it was funny, it was I used to work the front desk, so it's easy to say Jay Z, and I don't get starstruck, but Jay Z is like he has something about Jay. He's like yeah, like a he's aura. different. He's he's people don't understand how how different he is. It's like he's like the Derek G. Like he was like wow, like you know what I always say. He had a glow about him. Yeah, he, he's like, like the Prince glow. <laughs> they, they illuminate these stars that you're talking about. Like when they when we say they're different, they have a different glow about him. Jay had that glow, and and it's just Jay he. And just being <laughs> from being from from Brooklyn to Staten Island, and I have it. My father just give me twenty dollars a day. Next, you know, I wind up finding out. <laughs> I wind up finding out that if you get a credit card, mm -hmm. you get Reese's Pieces. There, I was hungry one day, and they they were giving out Reese's Pieces buttercups for free if you sign up for the credit card. So I'm like, all right, I didn't have no job. So I was like, I'm hungry. Next, thing you know, I got a credit card to come in the mail. I'm like, all right, all right. Five hundred dollar limit. All right, I didn't think about you know I didn't think about credit. No consequences. Like, no consequences. So next thing you know, I bought all the Jay Z albums. I bought a poster. <laughs> Streets is watching. I bought some Bo Jacksons. <laughs> I bought some Bo Jackson stickers. But everything all all Jay Z Jay Z Jay Z. And I didn't come to think about it. What watch the next thing you know it. That five hundred dollar limit. Exposed and they had to pay for that shit, <laughs> um, and I just threw that shit on the side. I didn't know nobody. Fuck, I, didn't, I didn't know nothing about no FICO score or nothing like that. I'm so stupid. So next thing you know, it go to Chelsea Piers and Jay Z, and when I I used to scan his car, I say, "Hey, what's up, Jay? Jay don't say nothing. He's like like this, right? So next thing you know, it I'm boxing at the time, and there was a trainer his name is Vicente. Shout out to Vicente. He 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 started this. This boxing, this whole Rockefeller boxing thing come out. So next thing you know it, he kept on asking me to spar. Kept on asking me to spar. I'm like, nah, but Sunday I'm good, man. I don't want to spar. I don't know. Nah. He goes, he goes, no, why? You you, you want to spar? I want to spar with you. And I'm like, you know what? All right, cool. We're going to spar at 2.30 at this and this. Because I knew Jay-Z gets there at that time. So I was like, all right. So next thing you know it, I'll never forget it. But then they's getting ready. Mr. Oh, shout out to Dos Reese. He was training Jay Z and all these guys there. And next, you know, I just came out from that from the amateurs, and now I'm wearing a, I'm wearing boxing equipment that Adidas outfit that no one has. Mm -hmm. Now I'm I'm ranked like like top ten, like like five, six, and stuff like that. At the time, so I put my bag to the side, and Jay Z's like, and I see him like looking, like next, you know, I put on my these Adidas boots that nobody had, put on these shorts. 
haven't seen it. I'm like, yeah, I got his attention. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Next thing you know it, the Sunday came out. I beat the brakes up. Boom, 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 boom. Jay Z, ever since that day, Jay Z, what up? What up, G? What up, yeah. G? <laughs> Yo, what up, G? Like this, you know what I'm saying? And people don't understand. J Jay was now I'm now I'm now I'm kicking to the jail. I'm like, yo, what up, Jay? What up, G? You know yeah. what I'm saying? They didn't call me kid, because I think everyone called me kid. So Jay's so different. It's like, yo, yeah, what up? Yeah. yeah. So next thing you know it, I I I said a stupid ass question. I said, This is when Jason Kidd just got to the Nets, right? So I said, Fucking Jay. He goes, I said, Yo, yo, Jay, can I ask you a question? He goes, Yo, what up? You know what I said? How much is a Jay Z? Uh, how much is a real NBA jersey? NBA jersey is he goes. He looked at me and went, I don't know. Yo, I don't know. What the fuck? I, like he gave me one. He's like, how much? Yeah, and he just broke out. Next thing you know, he wound up getting a, a runner. That's how cool Jay was. Jay got a runner to get me. He wanted to buy me a Jason Kidd jersey. And he wanted to send it to Chelsea Pierce and say, yo, this is for kid. And he wanted to give me a jersey and I wanted, wanted to all the fights. And next thing you know it, I asked Jay to to manage me when I was ready to turn pro. And he said, I'm down. And he asked Dame. And, and Dame goes, and Dame was on vacation. Dame came back to Jay left. And then he goes, um, Dame goes, he goes, what, what did Jay say? I said, Jay said he, he's down. What? You know, he goes, I'll sign you, but you had to do one thing. I said, well, he goes, you got to knock niggas out. If you're not knocking, I was like, but I'm a boxer. He goes, then I'm not signing you. I was like, nah, 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 I'll, I'll knock anyone out. I'll knock <laughs> niggas out. I'll do. He goes, all right, cool. And next you know, he brought Aaliyah to my fight, Yeah. to the Golden Glove Finals, and he goes, my father was going downstairs. He goes, yo, kid, yo, guess who's upstairs, kid? I said, he goes, yo, Romeo must die is upstairs, man. Romeo must die. I said, who? He goes, yo, Aaliyah, yo, she bad, kid, she bad. <laughs> and as you know, she was into fights and then wound up getting a Rockefeller chain and, and, you know, and they got the Rockefeller chain and then he got me my own boots and then with you guys and you always, you always been a best friend to me and, and now we're, we're here. Yeah, you know that's saying? good times. Great good times. times. So let me, let me, let me take the transition. So, you know, your whole boxing career, your dad and everything, of course. And now you're looking like what's the your evolution of where you're at in as far as like boxing and things? Because now you're not boxing no more. It's always interesting to me to see life after whatever athlete, the sports they was in and, and everything. I was always um, personal training and boxing at the same time, but in um, 2015 is when I officially retired. So then I'm going 24-7 personal training. So you can so work wanna... this body out? Pause. Um, <laughs> Easy. You know, relax. Yeah. Pause. Pause. So anyway, <laughs> pause. So <laughs> eat, eat healthy, kid. <laughs> so next, you know it. Um, I'm I'm going full. F um, I'm a personal trainer, twenty four seven. And I love helping people out with their goals and 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 getting healthier. And next, you know, I want to getting my certifications, my NASM, and then my one of the hardest certification I got was a USA level one triathlon trainer coach. So what is that? What what is that? So basically, that certification I can show everyone. Um, I can work at all realms of fitness. And mind you, I started. I never swam before or bike before. Of course, I ran because of boxing. So I had to start that out from the beginning. So I had, I had swimming coaches and stuff like that. I worked my ass off, just like in boxing. And I wound up taking a certification. It was like a week long course, and it was like um, the it was so tough. Where they they give you a background check, they give you the three hundred question, and you had the three hundred questions. They had to take a, a presentation on your own, and it was so hard. But it makes you really, really read in in Pacific body parts and stuff like that, what you need for each each event of, of swimming and biking and running, but it all gives you a all concept of all fitness levels from people that don't wanna do triathlons, but 
that's what the NASM and stuff like that. So with these certifications, it made me very, very um, ed, um, educational to where I can teach and showing these my clients what to work to lose out, I um, mean, to, to lose weight or just even get healthier. And also what I bring to the table is my boxing. I really don't think anyone knows much about boxing the way I do. And I get it from my trainers, all the great trainers I was around, and from my father, from Nermal, from Uncle Dre to Roger. Roger, Roger Mayweather, from CG bringing me to Vegas, and I worked with Roger Mayweather for two weeks and just... Being there and staying with Phil Ivey in his freaking suite, <laughs> and it was great times, man. And and then and then even working with Nassim Richardson, mm -hmm. I went. I was in. Um, God bless the God bless um, Naz. Naz is one of the best trainers I ever been around with. I went down to Miami and I and I went to the South Beach Boxing Club. They closed that shit down. They said no one no one could go in there. Some of these um renting out the spot. Like who? And when it was B Hop. Yeah. And then he, he didn't let it. and I say, Who's that brother now? He goes, Who that kid? Come over here. And next thing you know it, I'm watching B Hop and he was shadow boxed in two just tw twelve rounds without throwing a punch. Yeah. And just me just speaking to Nas. He goes, You see what he's doing? He's not throwing no punches. He's just picturing the fight in front of him. He's he's the artist. That's the that's his canvas. Look at yeah. him. And he goes, You wanna work out tomorrow? I'll say, Yeah, I wanna work out tomorrow. He goes, all right, come over here at um, 9. I get there at 8. Be happy stretching at 7.30. Mm. So he just, and that just shows you. And I'm sharing the ring with B Hop and just him doing the same thing. Yeah. It was just. Shut up, B Hop. I got to get him on this podcast. B Hop was, a, and it's, you know, B Hop speaks. B, he could talk. Oh, yeah. He talks more than, more than me. But he was so quiet that day. He was, it was just him, Nassim, and his short, um, Muslim guy that with the bald head, the short guy that he's always with. It was just them three. And then even working with Oscar Torres, God bless him. He 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 passed away too, working in um Big Bear for two and a half months with these great champions, you know? And just showing you what I can bring to the table. Well that's great. So from a training standpoint, um and then you you have clients, like are you looking to do anything more than that? Hopefully one day, man, I start my own gym. You know, what would it take? It what what would it take? Aside um, from money, everyone, you know, this is giving them the business. So, you know, money is always easy to say. Oh, I need money, but you need if you was to open the gym up for yourself. What what are the things that is necessary so someone listening would understand if they want that same dream? What they would have to do to open that gym up. I just think it's a it's a it's a it's a real hustle, and you really gotta do your own um, your own um, how can I say due it? diligence, due diligence, and reading up on what you have to do, and you gotta have a good team. Yeah, with me, I know I have some good people around me, you know. So hopefully one day I could open up my own gym, but I know you gotta have a um, you gotta get a great gym proposal. You gotta have a great backing on you say just if you don't have money say if you do have money you still need a good team i think that's what you need in any any business agreed you need and from boxing from other ven ventures that you want to do from records from from music anything you need a good team you know floyd always talks about he did it it's him like him but he had an incredible team around him Yes, he, he walks. Heyman. Yes, he walks into the gym. In, I mean, in the ring by himself. But the work that is done to prepare him to walk into that ring by himself is the team that he has. And then when you talk, when you mention Al Heyman, that's one of my guys as well. Al um, is one of the best, and absolutely put a financial plan, not just fights, but. Once you make money, what to do with the money? And just put it this way, and change and you, that man and you were, completely. You were, you were you were around me when this happened. Al Heyman wanted to sign me when he only had Vernon Forrest and Floyd. Mm -hmm. My father didn't know who he was. That's one that he said, "Don't take the Showtime fight that I fought on Showtime." And I, everyone knows I really won that fight, and they robbed me. Let me try to call Al Heyman back, but mm. it's it's still ringing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yeah, but yeah, yeah. but hey, th those are those are the business aspects where 
people around at that time to say, oh, we know him. You know, my father, I was my father's first fighter. So, yeah. of course, you'll make mistakes, but you got to have a good team. You got to have a good backing. So, just say if you don't have money or if you do have money, got to get some good investors that believe in your dream and believe in what you have to offer. And everything has to arrive, uh, revolve around, around the marketing plan that revolve around the that area that you wanna that you wanna have it and and it gotta all make sense because you have you have great friends again they say they wanna invest but if it doesn't make money they're not gonna wanna invest <laughs> so hopefully you know I cause I I it's you know I'm I'm happy where I'm at now but I know. Pretty soon, you know, I know people want the best for me. I have to, I have to do stuff on my own. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think any, anyone, any, any person that owns their own gym or even own company wouldn't want their employee to be just like them. They don't want to be, you know. Oh, you know what? I want him to work for me for for for. No, for, they, no we no. want to see growth and development. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's different. Is is. Hopefully, you know, if one day I decide I have some good people around me, like um, my gym, the the gym that I work out now in Gotham, they would they would support and and they would wish me the best. You know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm sure so, they will. Yeah, yeah. But so, you know, that's great. Yeah. Um, and I and I just try to strive, and I always tell and I always tell CG, even though we don't talk a lot, one of my one of my my biggest That's times in my lowest, I was down and out, and CG called me up, and he goes, this is way before Uber, he goes, yo, kid, get dressed. We, we'll, we'll, I'm getting a limo, I'll pick you up. And I'm like, what? And I just lost a fight. I was depressed. I was I was, I was, I was, I was living in Marine Park at the time. And he goes, I'm coming to the limo, come pick you up. And I'm like, nah, nah. He goes, nah, nah, kid, get up. Let's man up. Get up. Get dressed. Let's go. And I had no money. And I had to get change. That was in when you know when they put quarters in the big that big jug. So I put all the quarters, all the change, in a Ziploc bag. And I'm like, what am I doing? And when you're depressed, you know, I know I don't drink, I don't smoke. So my depression was like, uh, I was I didn't want to do nothing. I was like, you know, devastated. Everything was just crumbling on 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 me. And then we went from <laughs> we went from Limbo to pick me up, and we went to AC. Then after AC, we went to Foxwoods. <laughs> then it was me, CG, Phil Ivy, Barry Greenstein. Then he goes, you know what? We're not doing good here. In the field. We, 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 I said, we're going. He goes, oh, we're going to Tunica, Mississippi. Tunica, Mississippi. I didn't, What's in Tunica, Mississippi? He goes, don't worry <laughs> about it. Just can't. Let's go. We're going. Right? When, when the, when, I just so sorry. One of the scariest times of my life, right? So we're in Tunica, Mississippi. There's nothing around, <laughs> right? There's, you know, old white people gambling and stuff like that. And I see the three of the biggest black guys walking towards us. And I'm like, oh, man. And me trying to be a boxer and be in CG's man, right-hand man, I'm like, I'm going to have to fucking punch one of these guys. <laughs> I'm going to get fucked up. But, yo, come on, kid. Come on, stay with it. Stay with it. <laughs> like, no. Remember the Bronx said when he goes, all right, when he's in when he's in the car when, before um, Sonny picked him up, he goes, all right, don't lose your head. See? Yeah. Come on, see. I was like, all right, kid. Right. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm nervous. And every time they got closer, it got darker and darker and darker. <laughs> And this is this is during the beef of Fifty Cent and 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 Murder Inc. And I'm like, oh man! And they said, Yo, what up, C? I'm like, Oh my God! There is a God! There is a God! I'm like, Holy shit! But that just showed you where my loyalty is. I was ready to fucking die that day. I was ready. That's like how I am in the ring. Like you gotta kill. You never me. had we. You never was with me with any of the Fifty Cent beefs. No, nothing. There was no beef. There was That's nothing. why I try to tell people it was all fake. It's like it wasn't no beef like everyone perceived it or thought about it. Uh, 
But those guys that you say that came up and said what's up to me, that those was the BMF. That was BMF. Yeah, that was, and, that was T. And, and yo, and, and they came boys. they was like, yo. Shout out T, what up? Southwest, what up? Yo, and it was crazy. I was like, oh shit. Well, I don't know if I can talk about it. Maybe we can do it. But <laughs> we went to Vegas, my first trip. And there was this dude that I liked the whole fucking trip. I just kept on talking to him, talking. And CG goes, Yo, kid, leave that man alone. <laughs> and he goes, Nah, get, nah, see, kid is cool. Kid's my man. Kid. Yeah. And that was, that was, that was Supreme. That's that was Supreme. Yeah. Kid Supreme. Shout Agrippa. out, Supreme. Yep, so I'll never forget. I was just something about Preem that I just like, yo, his whole, he, he had like a Jay-Z aura. He had He's like got a, a glow Jay, about him. Yeah, and I just kept on, I don't know. I was He's like, got that glow. I was like, yo, I like this fucking dude. And T.G. was like, yo, leave that man alone. <laughs> and T, and Preem goes, yo, 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 we kids cool, Bellagio. kids. That was in the Bellagio. And that we was, was going hey, crazy. About this. Remember the Bronx time when Kolojo was lining up? Yeah, he had your I role. went, that was me. That's how I got into my, I rolled so That's much. That's how you I got some it. money. Yeah, I Phil sent I rolled, you I kept bag. up going. I kept up going. <laughs> no, no, that was different. That was the first trip when you brought us all. CG brought a bunch of Brooklyn boxes oh, to yeah. Vegas for the Castillo That's right. Floyd Mayweather. This for that Castillo Floyd fight. I'm about to, I tell you how. I tell you how ill Floyd is. I got stories. I tell you how ill Floyd is. So Floyd's going to the rematch, right? We go to Vegas. CG. It was CG, Preem, Irv, all these guys. They just invited a bunch of Brooklyn young dudes to come to Vegas. We go to Vegas. I'm I'm lacing out Colosio. Boom, boom, boom. And next thing you know, a guy goes, Yo, Irv, I got a tape. <laughs> Irv went so much, No! no. Yes. I was, Ooh, seven out. I was, well, I, was, I was on there. I was on there for like a good... Like an hour and an hour. I made these guys a lot of fucking money. And CG was just setting up the... And I, had, and, yeah, and I had some money that day and more money than I ever thought. But come out. So Preem was there. We had a good show. It was a Floyd Mayweather and Castillo too. i tell you how Floyd is one of my favorites ever. So after the flight, Floyd broke his hand. His hand was all broken. Oh, he showed you, he he showed you his yo, knuckles. His, everything his, yo, was broken. fucked up. Then he had some new pair of boxing boots. You know when you had like dead skin on the bottom of your of your feet? Like, you know, just dead skin. He had his whole both his feet were all pink underneath. He just peeled out the whole skin of the bottom of his boot because he wore some new boots. Yeah. You know what Floyd says? Yo, guys, let's go. We're going to the gym. We're gonna play some basketball. <laughs> so next you know, we wind up playing basketball. These guys wouldn't lose. It was it was Jay Prince. It was it was Floyd. It was um you it was Winky. Yeah, shit. it was Wink. It was Winky. Winky. It was Shout Travis. out Winky right. Winky, my man. I love Wink. Hook him and cook him, champ. You know, you know, Winky's the man, the fucking the golf pro of all boxes. Then you have Travis Sims and then you have all up on Louis. And we 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 were balling. We were playing ball and we lost. We got out. Floyd had played like seven games of basketball. Seven games. Next thing you know, it goes, all right, guys. Yo, look, we're out. We're gonna teach how we'll be we're out. We, where are we going? We're going to Spearman Rhino. <laughs> we go to Spearman Rhino, he really throws out twenty five thousand to the ships. Next thing you know it. Floyd plays a joke on me. I didn't know it was a joke. CG probably knew when he was doing it. <laughs> so everyone, he goes, yo, you sit there. You sit there. You sit there. So I sat down. They got me the biggest <laughs> and fattest stripper ever in life. Not to give me a dance not one day, that one song, for the whole night. <laughs> And in the beginning, I'm like, oh, what's your name? You look good. And then at the end, I'm like, yo, you shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> you should go back to, to school. And how many kids you got? Yo, your, your kids want to be... We're just trying I, to make sure you have a good yo, time, yo, bro. Listen, listen. In the beginning, I was like, oh, you looking good? And next thing you know, I'm trying to... I'm being her therapist the whole, for the whole two hours. And I and I got up, my legs were numb. I'm like, oh my god, I get. And they were like, yo, kid, sit back down. And Floyd goes, yo, sit back down. Yo, don't get up. When Floyd, I'm like, oh fuck, man. I'm going. My my legs are numb. And I see Floyd on the side like this. Like, 
I was like, oh, you got the plan to jump over. <laughs> so that's that's one of the jokes. So I, I've been around. I've been around these guys. I have so many freaking stories, and because of CG, always being that mentor and just bringing out brings out like family. It it's it's been a great freaking. It's been a great. I guess you could say first half or second half of my life, and now this is where it starts again. I have you know being a being a father with two kids. And I have to always press to be better than I was the year before. And know? on that right there, again, I want to thank you for coming in. Definitely. We're going to support whatever business you get. You know, we'll make sure we promote it. If you start your gym, we would love to be informed when you do that and keep pushing forward, man. I want to yeah. just thank you for coming in. I love I love you guys, and I, and I support this podcast 100% and CG and... Everybody from We got Nini. a lot more times coming, boy. Mm-hmm. A lot more good times. And let me just tell you some one thing. The Lorenzo family are one of the greatest families ever in life. From Thank Nini, you. from God Bless, I Love Poppy, from Irv, from Angie to all the sisters, you know, and Nikki. They, they, their family is has to be up on the on the the best family list for that mm-hmm. anyone Thank that wants to be you know what I'm saying? But I love everyone and thank you for everyone for the support and all these years and hopefully you guys uh, love my stories and <laughs> go viral like my herpes. We good. Like, herpes. We mm. good. So, yo, Boy. this is, uh, again, thank you for watching. This is Chris Gotti Lorenzo, my partner, Don De Niro. It's the money for the gringos. You already know um, you're a dad. Um, do not verbally abuse your kids. <laughs> Please. Is this a public service announcement <laughs> after this? <laughs> Should I tell my father right now to leave the premises? Listen to me. They, whatever they it to takes. To his house right now. Whatever it takes. You, know, it's the, you know, here's the real trick to what you just said, though, before we sign mm-hmm. off. It's really, when I say whatever it takes, it didn't break him. See, if you push a kid and they break him, then... That's too far. If you push him and make this man better, well, he'll him. be the first one to, to say. <laughs> but, but Another, you know, and again, I asked him a question when he said all those ass women's were they unwarranted? They was warranted. Now maybe they was more than he thought it should have been. You know, and maybe you know and, his, your and dad's a, left hook is a little bit better than most. <laughs> but, it was it was definitely tough loving, but I could I honestly say that. Everyone that knows me knows that me and my father had the best relationship. Exactly. I mean, all that matters. No one he, would ever, no one would ever. He beat that love right into you, boy. No, 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 no one ever <laughs> recipe will, will understand our relationship to this day. He's my best friend. He's my biggest fan and my biggest critic. And that's what you want to have. You want to have a great, and that's what the team and the all. I mean, you're blessed to have that, so you're good. That's all that matters. Yeah. Good. Have someone that, that you know. So, again, and look, I'm, just, a, I'm a fucking gentleman. I'm a fucking A class gentleman. And just for my father. My father my father taught me well. So you 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 got that. Yeah. You got Swag that. Got That's that. good. Swag it to Don't let an ass whipping stop you from getting what you want. Yes. 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 And and that's don't, the, that's, don't that's, be a, that's and, the bottom line. And, and don't be afraid to get an ass whipping when that ass whipping is is necessary. If you if, Pause. You, if you got it coming, is you got it coming. Pause. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> Man, thank you again. Keep liking, sharing, subscribing. And, uh, this is giving them business, and we out. Make sure this goes viral. <laughs>